Uh, my name is Cole Siegel, and I'm going to be going into the David and Lucille Packard Foundation headquarters building. I'm mainly going to be going into the innovations that went to the sustainability, or creating sustainability in this building through the design and construction phases, and also the commissioning phases. So first of all, some site information. Um, this building is located at 343 2nd Street in Los Altos, California. Um, it was the years of construction were April 2010 through June 2012, so not too long ago. Um, it's considered a commercially green building. It's lead platinum certified, has a net zero energy output, and it's around 49,000 square feet. Um, some of the owners and stakeholder project team include David Lucille Packaging Foundation, um, EH, EHDD were the architects and construction managers, um, and it was a design build project. Um, the, the building overall had a very, really good green rating. Um, they received, they achieved net zero carbon, which is their main value when it came to construction, to construction design this building. Um, they came LEED Platinum certified, receiving 94 out of the 110 points that the U.S. Green Building Council provides. Um, the reason why you want a green rating this high is that it gives instant recognition for your building, you know, better lease up rates, higher resale value, and healthier indoor space for your employees. Um, and the use of energy, water, and other resources are just so optimized and just and, and just provides a very sustainable building that's just great for the environment. And this building is something that this building has values that we want every building in the future to have as values too. We want every building to be sustainable and hopefully achieve a net zero carbon by hopefully like 2050. Um, next, I'm going to be going over some of my site visit highlights. I took a virtual tour of this building. I was unable to go out to California and tour this myself, but the virtual tour was very comprehensive. The first highlight I want to go over is just their creative ways to reduce energy. Um, the, the owner was quoted saying, to achieve a net zero carbon expenditure, you need to be creative. And this building was very creative and very innovative. You know, just one of the interesting things I wanted to note just quickly on this slide was the building was designed to incorporate uses of the natural environment, such as the lighting and the and the way that the water migrates. So they have very extensive water capture systems and they use so much natural lighting in the building that most of the time during the day, the building does not even need to have any lights on. This picture right here, you can see how well lit it is, but there isn't a single fixture that's turned on right now. It's all that is natural lighting from outside the building. The solar panel system on the roof was also a highlight of my visit. Um, the solar panels on the roof are so efficient that they actually provide well over a year's worth of electricity. And this was actually recorded over the first year operation it isn't something that was predicted. You know, a lot of green scores are very skewed from the fact that it's based on how the building was designed, not exactly how the building operates. And I just thought this was very interesting because it is rare for solar panels to be efficient to the point where it can provide its all of its own electricity on its own plus extra. Um, the third highlight I want to go is the building's material and how it was sourced. I mean, the building was built using materials gathered from the previous building demolished on the site that they used. 95% of the material used on the current headquarters was actually sourced from the previous building that was on the site. And I just, this picture shows just the exterior. Like this was just some an interesting design way of incorporating all the material. You know, to reuse a bunch of material, there's just no way you can have, have a uniform design. So you have to be very innovative. And you see there's three different materials here that provides a very nice aesthetic while also being very sustainable because they're reusing all the material from the previous building. Uh, the fourth highlight is the drain water capture system. You know, the part of the building's design was to incorporate systems that reduce the building's water usage. And by capturing, you know, water and water drain from the building from the roof, and reusing that water to say water all the plants around the um, the building, you can just provide for very sustainable wa like water usage overall in the building. Um, the fifth highlight was the utility monitoring system. Um, there is over fifteen thousand sensors located across the building that all integrate into this computer system that monitors energy usage, such as um, utilities, and it actually incorporates. I mean, it goes so detailed that it actually goes into the light, like it actually will record how much light's coming through the blinds, which is just pretty insane. Um, the computer system also integrates directly to every employee's desktop. They might get a notification that says when windows can be opened up for natural vent ventilation and at the same time still maintain desired indoor temps. This results in a lot less use of the HVAC system, which saves energy and will increase the building's overall sustainability. Next, I'm going to be talking about the integrated project delivery approach they use for this. Um, what is an integrated project delivery? It's a construction approach that integrates several parties, people, systems, business structures, and practices. 
And by integrating all these parties, you can optimize design and construction of a building. In the PFH building used this approach and brought in several parties in note. PFH used this approach with the goal of reaching net zero carbon operation and LEED Platinum certification sustainability. And in order to achieve these values, it's, this approach was used to communicate um, information and values between all parties, you know, the architects, uh, the designers, the engineers and construction managers, et cetera. Um, there are many pros to integrated project delivery approach. Um, inefficiencies are avoided as a result of optimization. And the Bayville Swift Packard Foundation headquarters actually hired an outside company to help them optimize this approach. They, they hired a company that specializes in this approach and, and so that they can reach their goals and not fall behind, basically. And this approach is interesting because it looks at overall project goals rather than individual goals. And by do, they, they help do this by through some of their finances. So they achieve this through contingency and risk pool shared profit. So each party shares their profit, which is then added to a contingency or risk pool in order just to keep the project safe financially as it, as it goes. And each party equally shares in both the risk and the award of a project, which is just a very different approach from normal design. In normal general contracting, the risk isn't exactly the same, but in here it's very interesting that the risk is almost completely the same, but there's still a lot of pressure on individuals to perform. And But what's nice is that this contract, with all these parties involved, is able to link all the parties into one with a clear chain of command. This is very important when you want a project when this pro with the project with so many stakeholders, so many parties with so many um, different values. While the integrated project delivery approach sounds very useful, it can, there's also some cons to it. It can be very time consuming and each party has a goal which can only be met through innovation and challenge usually. And this an innovation and challenge can only be conquered through time. And sometimes you don't always have the time to do this and it can really put burdens on individuals um, to be the stronger party and just to keep pushing with these innovations. Another thing is that the IPD approach doesn't always fit the project. You don't really want, it really works for like long, complex, um, innovative projects. You don't want to use it on just some small, simple, you know, residential housing project, for example. You know, and with this, with this approach is also comes challenge and risk. And at some point, challenges can lead to schedule delays and burden individuals. And if individuals are burdened, this requires the stronger parties to work harder to stay efficient. Um, this is a, this is, this is caused because of the of the equal risk involved with these kind of contracts. Um, the owners use the integrated product delivery approach in, uh, in innovative ways for sourcing material selection. And in order to help the need for optimization, the IPD approach, like the owner actually hired an outside sourcing company. And these sourcing companies used to help basically order materials, stay on track with schedule and budgets while keeping the same values that the design that the owners and the engineers put forth and the designers. And what's nice about this is it just allows for clear communication on all these aspects. Um, sourcing companies can help, you know, strategies ways of keeping track of material and purchasing budgets as well. You know, they devise innovative way to reduce energy requirements by setting a goal of using material from the demolished building. So this was just helped to drive their value for sustainability. You know, I mentioned before that 95% of the new headquarters was built using material from the previously previous building located on that site, which is very innovative and provides for very sustainable material sourcing um, way of constructing a building. Next, I'm going to go into some of the construction field practices. Um, in terms of construction waste, uh, waste management refers to getting as much of the possible waste material generated during construction reused and not just put in a dumper landfill. And so like, how did the Packard Foundation headquarters manage their waste? Well, I've mentioned it before already. You know, the headquarters built on a site with an existing building that was to be demoed, and they ended up using 95% of that demoed material for the existing building, which is just a very uh, innovative way of managing your construction waste and reusing that in order, for, in order for a sustainable process of getting rid of all your construction waste, which is, can be very damaging to the environment. In the, um, also, the indoor environmental quality was something I wanted to go over. Um, so the indoor environmental quality can be assessed from several organizations and for this building, they use the Center for the Built Environment. Um, and they, what they do is they conduct a survey on employees of the headquarters and in order to assess an employee's satisfaction, which is what the environment itself indoors. And some of the questions they're asked relate to you know, thermal comfort, acoustics, lighting, little office layout, et cetera. And it's on a seven point scale from very satisfied to very dissatisfied. And the Packer Foundation actually had a rating of a 97% satisfaction, which is incredible. 
and many of those surveys may surveyed many of those survey made comments on how well natural lighting is used throughout the building. They say that natural lighting can be very uplifting to your mood, and that this building provided that immensely. Um, stormwater management is also a very interesting way, or the way they, they manage their stormwater is very interesting in this project. All the plants from the building are irrigated by on-site water collection system. I mentioned that before in my site visit highlight. And you know, low flow fixtures and rainwater collectors are used. You know, this picture is an example of just a, a rainwater collector. You know, it slopes down and collects that water and then reuses it in the irrigation system. Um, but a subsurface drip management system is primarily used, and it's ET based, which is evapotranspiration. Um, yeah, so this is just an example of a rain garden that I already went over. In regards to commissioning and turnover, the Packard Foundation actually was very innovative, and they're innovating in the fact that they commit money toward a transition period of testing, training, and monitoring how the how the operates operates and how the headquarters operates post construction. Because you don't always just want to look at when it comes to sustainability, you don't just want to look at a the way a building was built and what material was used, you want to look at how it operates post construction, and by commission by commissioning money and like using money put forth towards like the first year transition, you can really just see how well your building is operating and see how well you're performing and how well you met your goals. And so the foundation took some contingency money and allocated it to a years allocated it to a year's involvement after occupancy of the design, engineering, and construction firms in the commissioning process. For the last part of this video, I'm going to go over some of the very interesting innovations that I found. And so I just mentioned this, but commissioning was a very interesting innovation. Um, you know, just the way they put money forth towards a transition period of testing and training. You know, in most companies, or mo not most companies, most, most owners, they don't want to put money towards monitoring it, at least in the past. But in the future now, we're looking at sustainable buildings over the course of occupancy. This is a very interesting and innovative strategy to use in order to see if you achieve those goals. The next innovation was material sourcing. You know, I mentioned this before, how they source 95% of the material from the previous demo building. And they also pledged that they will only source material within a 500 mile radius to reduce the energy expended from transporting the material in large trucks, et cetera, and stuff like that. Um, the solar panel system is the last thing I'm gonna talk about in regards to innovation. Um, the Packard headquarters utilized a solar panel system to generate its own electricity. Um, it was so efficient that it could power the whole, it could provide electricity for the building for a whole year after operating for a year. So it's extremely self-sustaining and very efficient. That concludes my presentation on the David Lucille Packard Foundation headquarters. Um, my main goal this presentation was to show that this building is going to pave the way for the future of sustainable construction. And this is a direction that it's not something we, we want to go in, something we, it's a direction we need to go in in order to create a positive environment in the future.